Welcome into SportsSource.tv. This is our overtime segment, joined by Chuck Cavalleras, Vincenzo Ferrara, <laughs> and uh, Bob Hodge right Robert. here. Robert, Robert, Robert Charles, yeah. and Vincenzo. All right, <laughs> very good. Um, this first this first segment this first segment of our overtime <laughs> is brought to you by Smoke and Joe's. You see their name right there. SmokeandJoe'sTobacco.com is their website. You can learn more. Uh, in terms of if you're a cigar smoker, if you enjoy a cigar, if you have a father or brother who enjoys cigars, wife or daughter, infant, that's probably not good. <laughs> but anybody else, go down to Smoke and Joe's and pick out the best from the best selection of uh, cigars in town. Just a great job, Alcoa and then the original store on paper mail. Big walk-in humidor down in uh, Alcoa. Okay, guys, uh, wanted to bring up two or three things here. First, the Tennessee Titans draft. They added 10 players yesterday, four linemen, three defensive backs, uh, added Alabama running back Derrick Henry to DeMarco Murray, interesting. Um, some injury questions, drafted some guys that uh, don't know if they're all gonna be ready for the start of season. Thoughts on what the Titans did? I was pretty, looking at them not being a Titans fan, I was kind of impressed. Yeah, I did too. I, I thought they, they, they moved back, they moved up, they got extra draft picks, they did a lot of things. You know, I think even the best informed teams, the drafts are a lot of a crap shoot, yes. guys that you draft, yeah. so we'll see how the guys work out. But as far as what they did to manipulate to where they got, I, I thought that was pretty smart, pretty sharp. Especially considering how poorly this organization has drafted in recent years. Yes. Right. It, it, it was so much better than we've seen. And that you're right, they maneuvered, they moved back to 15, they identified a guy they wanted in Jack Conklin, the offensive tackle from Michigan State. They had to get out of this draft with one of those top three tackles. And Stanley was already gone at Notre Dame. They weren't touching Laramie Tunsil, so they went and got Conklin, who was moving up. They had to address that need because you have to protect mm -hmm. your franchise quarterback. I thought they did a terrific job. Chuck? Yeah, plus you got two first-round picks next year mm -hmm. from, from yeah. what you did. And, and for weeks and weeks and weeks, oh, the number one pick is going to be Laramie Tunsil. And the Titans were smart enough to trade down uh, the safety from MTSU. I mean, that's a third-round pick, correct? I mean, he's supposed to be a really good player. And you look, John Robinson, the, the GM, in some yeah. of the quotes talks about how they brought him in. They gave him some of the terminology within 15, 20 minutes, how this kid's picking everything up, calling out signals, telling other people where to be. How much thought does that show they put into their draft? Right. Well, and I'm getting back to something Vince said here, um, you talk about how they control the draft, bouncing up and down and moving around to find their guys. The new GM came from Bill yeah. Belichick and the right. Patriots. Yeah. So you're not just rolling the dice on what you like. You said, Bob. A lot of them are saying it's a 50-50. So I mean, you, a you can tell he's got a, a history. A of no, he's worked there. with guys who who do that, who played the draft. I thought he did a nice job. In the Derrick Henry thing, you can't just put your all, all your eggs in the DeMarco Murray basket. Right. No. You don't know if he's going to get back to that. That's that right. And Charlie Casserly, no. you know, the Red, right. former Redskins GM, he thinks Derrick Henry will be the starting running back. He'll be the one that does the best there. Well, here's the thing. You're going to have to have a run-heavy offense there with Mariota. you got a young quarterback, uh, so I don't have a problem with it. If it's a different type of offense, you know, if it's the Packers or the Patriots and you've got two running backs, I'm wondering why. But for yes. the offense they're building, I think it's smart with the young quarterback. All right, Cleveland Browns. Local owner Jimmy Haslam here has uh, decided to go the money ball approach. Brought in a guy from baseball to run this thing. <laughs> it's, he's, it's the first NFL team to make a run at this. And what they did was they went after guys that were all very successful production numbers in college. Not, they didn't do a lot of this drafting for we did this at the combine. They looked at guys who had success in college. They also looked at guys who were good character guys. <laughs> After the Mansell, you'd think they would. Uh, they added 14 guys yesterday, I and mean, that's or this week. Yeah. That's a, basically a fourth of your team or a third of your team, and they need it. But you added 14 guys. Thoughts on the Browns and what they're doing? I, Bob, I think it's going to be fun to watch. Well, it's, it's going to be very interesting to watch. You know, they basically gutted that team when the season was over. They went into free agency and let guys go. Good guys. A <laughs> lot of good yeah. football Our guys players chose with that to team. go. Yeah. And <coughs> excuse me. So I, I really think it is going to be interesting to watch. And, I mean, you said you've got in 14 guys. Well, let's say eight or nine of those guys are NFL players. Mm -hmm. You've also got a lot of draft picks going into next year in the exactly. first two rounds for yeah. Cleveland. 
So it, it will be an interesting approach, and a lot of people were really saying, well, why did, why did Cleveland let, well, I know Travis Benjamin, the, the receiver, go, the big offensive lineman. You weren't going to win with them. You know, you, you had so many holes. I think it's an interesting approach. You're right. It'll be fun to watch. Will it work? Who knows? My big question about not only is it interesting to watch, will they stick to it? Yeah. You know, well, the, the mission the mission statement well, has well, been we're going to be Cleveland consistent. Cleveland stuck with anything. anything. Well, that's what I'm saying. So the, mission, the mission statement was going to be consistency, and it's not been. If you're going with a completely different approach, if this yeah. thing blows up this year, if it looks terrible and all these guys suck, you can't say, okay, we're starting from scratch again. You better buy into this and do it for two or three years and see where it goes. And I also wonder if Hugh Jackson, if he's the one coaching this and it turns into a mess, if he nah. sticks around and likes it. Vince, your, your idea on the Browns. Yeah, and Mike Mayock even pointed out that, look, a lot of a lot of teams have this as part of what they do in preparing for it. It's just not, not, committed, yeah. right, not committed to it 100%. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the Cleveland Browns for identifying that they need wide receivers because they drafted <laughs> a bunch of them. Yeah. We all knew it years ago and they didn't do it, but they stocked up on it. I wonder about a big number at one position. Overall, I think it was good, especially the character and the productivity. Yeah, mm -hmm. how, how's RG three going to do at quarterback? And then you got you mentioned Manziel. You got that whole Josh Gordon nightmare of what he's going through. And guys, you can't count on being there. Uh, but but at the end like of the, the day, you just don't expect the Browns to be that much better. For but some do reason. you like the? I, I think it's worth the Cleveland Browns and the number of <laughs> draft picks they have. I think it's worth trying this, but it needs to, like you're saying, it needs to be more than an experiment. So I agree. Nothing sure. else has worked for them. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if yeah, anybody's going to try yeah. it, try yeah. it. Yeah. Why not? One thing where I thought they did look like they had a little bit of a baseball guy running them was the fact that they drafted 14 guys. Typically, a team will draft nine or ten, and then get really want rid of all their other picks if they yeah. have more, so they can just sign guys as undrafted free agency because it's cheaper. You don't have to give as much of a bonus or anything. And you're not paying huge money to seventh-round draft picks. But you take 14 guys. I just wonder how that's going to work because a lot of teams don't want more than 9 or 10. So that was interesting to me. I figured you could just sign a lot of these guys as undrafted free agents. But anyway, especially the late rounders. All right, I got an email from a Vol fan, and I'm just going to read it to you, okay? After watching the UT baseball team lose another game because of the bullpen, this was sent yesterday, I would like to hear the Sports Source team discuss a possible concern at Tennessee. Let me give you my thoughts. One, football team could not hold on to three leads this past fall. Two, technically four. Two, men's, uh, meaning four leads, not number yeah. four. Point two. Men's basketball teams blew leads against Texas A&M, plus at least three others. I cannot remember all of them right now. Uh, number three, Lady Vols basketball teams had struggle in the second half against many teams. Number four, baseball pitchers struggle in, to maintain leads. Number five, all that said, each of the teams had major wins this year. My question is, does the University of Tennessee have a sports psychologist? And if they do, can they place the blame on the ability not to finish games in any sport on the athletic department? What would wow. you think about I think it's a little coincidental that they're all blowing leads at once, personally. But oh, I, I think they I most of these programs do have a guy they have a sport. Look, hey, whether Tennessee even baseball, if it's not official, they have somebody in town that's a sports psychologist. Tennessee baseball had to make a lot of improvement just to get to the position to blow leads. Right. Correct. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. It's true. Uh, the psychology is only the psychologist is only good for the first yeah. eight innings. Yes, but if you did, uh, you know. There was some comments made after the loss yesterday about the personalities on the team changing. That did you just wonder? That's not the question. I know, but the Let's personalities the changing okay. fits in with the sports psychologist. Okay. okay. In terms of okay. being able to win, I you, you in. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I think it's it's just coincidental. And yes, blowing leads in multiple sports. I mean, baseball's had a long run of struggles. Football mm -hmm. has up until. You know, they're on, on the uh, incline. But, no, I, I think it's coincidental. And there's also been games, especially in basketball, that went the other way as well. So, I don't, I don't think But I would have a sports psychologist. I'm going to go more with youth and inexperience is the, not the, the, the overriding factor between all of them. It's not a psychological thing. It's just where your player's at. I think it's the team you're watching. I think if you went to a Kansas fan and said, well, you think that's the team, they're going to say, well, our baseball team blew these two games. This football yeah. game they blew. That basket. I just think we pay attention to our teams. We remember every game you blow. Right. So I think, you know, unless you're Alabama in football, most teams are going to have losses. And I'd say in most of them you had a lead at some point. I'm not, you know, completely discarding the guy's argument. I think that a sport, like I say, most schools do have somebody in town right. that they'll send players to if they got a head yeah. issue. But um, I do think that 
it's more focusing on your team. You notice your own blown leads more than you do other schools having the exact same problem. And the sports psychologist, I think, is going to be more helpful with the individual sport players, like a golfer, a tennis player, or somebody like that. Baseball player. You know, yeah. you've seen yes. who it was John Smoltz who had the, wasn't that a Knoxville sports psychologist that he was dealing with for, for a years? while? Yes, yeah. yes, I believe, yes, true. And the guy made a career out of it just being a sports psychologist. Uh, wish I could remember his name, but I can't. Sorry, to him. Did a, <laughs> did a fine job with Smoltz. Yeah. You know, as a Braves fan, I appreciated that. Now it's their fans that need psychologists yeah. <laughs> to, to decide, why are you watching that? The Inkblot shows another homerless game. All right. Uh, thanks to Chuck, Vince, Bob. Appreciate all you guys. Um, thanks to you for watching. Uh, the rest of today's show is also loaded, so if you missed it, check it out in any of these boxes around me. And we will see you next Sunday, 11 a.m. on WATE6 for the Sports Source.